Hello everyone, I'm Salwa and I'm here to present our work on sensory delivery in forests with aerial robots, a new paradigm for environmental monitoring. UAVs have been used effectively for geospatial mapping above forests, volcanoes and coastal areas. They are used for environmental monitoring in these landscapes, generates especially dense yet sparse time series often not ideal for ecological studies that monitor long-term changes to the environment. Hence, the need to perform frequent flights, which increases the costs and the manpower needed for such studies. The capability to deploy sensors from UAVs can significantly reduce the effort of acquiring datasets with appropriate spatio-temporal resolution, as the deployed sensor can complement spatially dense spatially dense UAV data with temporally dense data. As we can see in this figure, the forest has different layers, different strata. The understory layer is often clear of branches and other obstacles, creating direct access to tree trunks where sensors can be securely attached. The canopy layer is very cluttered with branches and foliage, which is hazardous for flight. However, vertical corridors can often be found where UAVs can operate as long as safety distance is kept from obstacles. The emergent layer of the forest is mostly unobstructed, creating ideal conditions for flight. These trees are also viable targets for uh, sensor deployment. The different strategies proposed in this work are tailored for sensor deployment in forests using multi-rotors and address the different topologies found in the forest strata. To start with, I will present direct sensor placement, or in other words, a way to uh, attach a sensing device directly onto a surface. The platform used for direct sensor placement is an area manipulator, in other words, a quadcopter equipped with a one degree of freedom mechanism on board. Such a one degree of freedom manipulator or mechanism is passive and it has a compliant gripper. On the compliant gripper, we have the housing for a sensory device with a magnetic attachment. Thanks to this, the area manipulator can attach a sensor on magnetic surfaces. The onboard controller is a fixed racer with a PX4 firmware. The onboard computer is an upcore board. Sensing on board comprises of the IMU, telemetry, but also a visual odometry, which is done through two different cameras. We have a tracking camera, but also a depth camera. And finally, we have the manipulator on board, which has a quick release mechanism for attachment of the sensor. The interaction part of the operation is controlled by an admittance controller on board. So in these videos, we can see the quadcopter performing experiments on the admission admittance controller indoors. The drone is manually pulled backwards by a cable. In the top plot, we can see how the force and the position diverge since the admittance controller is switched off. However, as we switch on the admittance controller in the bottom, in the bottom video, we can see how the two curves merge. In this slide, we can see the autonomous sensor placement sequence run indoors. We carried out several experiments where we interacted with a vertical magnetic wall and we placed the sensor um, with onboard computing and sensing completely autonomously. The main difficulties associated with this approach is that we do everything on board, so we rely completely on onboard computing. But also for sensing, we also make sure that as we approach the target surface, we keep the target area in the in the field of view of the cameras. So we readjust the trajectory in real time to get to the target area as desired. And then we uh, turn on the admittance controller, which, which allows us to, to have a compliant interaction with the wall. The main thing of this work is that we provide a complete framework to do autonomous sensor placement with this, with a quadcopter. Another way of addressing sensor deployment in forests would be through sensor launching, where there is no direct um, interaction between the target and the UAV, but the sensor on board the UAV are kind of launched uh, towards the target. 
this can be extremely useful in environments where you can't access the, the surface directly due to obstacles or other constraints and so it would be um, ideal to keep a safety distance and still be able to attach a sensor. The full system is comprised of a sensory payload with an attachment mechanism, some form of energy storage, in this case a spring, a trigger mechanism and an actuator as its driver. With the main required to keep everything small and lightweight, we took care of designing the trigger mechanism itself. The sizing of the system was done from an energetical perspective. The energy stored on board is used, is used to launch the sensor, and then it's dissipated in flight and finally on impact. We looked into this problem in reverse, so that given certain constraints such as the sensor mass and the desired range, a mechanical energy storage system could be designed. So to start with, we looked at the indentation energy on different types of woods and bark as well. We then modeled the sensor trajectory stage as a point mass under the action of its own weight and drag. Within the ranges that we were interested in, drag proved to be a minor source of dissipation. This is of course only for direct trajectories. Only mechanical energy sources were considered due to their simplicity and easy maintenance in the field. Among those, the uses of buckling rods elastomers and springs were considered. Ultimately, a linear spring was used. Differently from the previous work, uh, within this work we did not link, look into navigation and path planning to approach the sensor deployment part. So the majority of the experiments were carried out indoors where with the help of a motion capture system we were able to uh, know in advance the UAV states, linear and angular states, but also the target position. Then as we approached the target, we would just command the actuator on board to launch the sensor. On the left side, we have the triggering mechanism, which weighs only 22 grams and packs 1.55 joules into a spring. This launches a sensor pod, which uh, encapsulates an Arduino Nano 33 tens for a total of 24 grams. The mechanism is currently manually loaded and it locks into place using an aluminum part included in the sensor peripherals. In the video on the left side of the screen, we can see the sensor launcher in action for indoors experiments against a tree branch. On the right side, we see the SMA actuator. Summarizing all of these experiments, we see how both the accuracy and the precision of the system decrease with distance. We see here that the vertical bias increases considerably with distance. This is in part due to the fact that the viscous dissipation due to the drag is neglected, but mostly because we don't have perfect conversion from the strain energy in the spring to the kinetic energy. On the right side, we see a high speed footage that helps in the estimation of these losses, uh, which are in the order of like 20% more or less. The scatter in these experiments was also improved by using tail stabilizers. So far, we've done very limited tests outdoors using radio control on the UAV, and this was only for the purpose of showcasing the use of the system uh, outdoors. The third method for sensor deployment in forests that kind of mimics the behavior of birds flocking above the canopy. Multirotors can mimic such behavior and can land on tree branches and observe the environment while remaining idle. With the ability to perch, in fact, a flying vehicle will be able to safely gather forest data while preserving the battery life and also retaining maneuverability. Such approach um, to environmental monitoring offers great flexibility in the use of UAV as mobile sensing devices, but not only. In fact, such flying robots could also act as a temporary gateway for communication networks in remote areas. To perch on tree, on tree branches, we designed a passive adaptive grapple, a lightweight, soft mechanism that basically compliantly uh, grapples around tree branches of irregular shapes. If you look at the table at the, at the bottom of this slide, you can see that the grapple only contributes to 2% of the total mass, only weighing 32 grams. However, it's extremely robust 
to uh, pull up forces much higher of its weight. We can go from five times to 25 times higher its weight. If we look at the graph in the middle, we can see how different payloads behave on different types of woods. Specifically, we compare bark and spine woods. And we can see that typically we can lift up to four kilos on bark and up to 11 um, kilos on uh, wood. So the main reason that makes us use tensile perching is because of the energy efficiency. So as we said before, we can, can be able to use uh, UAVs as mobile active sensors and they can go idle once they are perched on a tree. To be able to control the, t the tensile perching sequence on the UAV, we just need to control the thrust vector that needs to counteract the gravity and some disturbance forces. As the angle increases and the, and the UAV goes vertically, the gravity factor goes smaller and smaller. At 30 degrees, we are able to save up to 50% energy, and at 10 degrees, we are able to save more than 80%. So basically, almost no trust while also descending in the perched mode. The tensile perching sequence comprises of three stages. The first stage is the approach stage. We model both the environment, so the tree branch, and the tensile and the cable as a compliant system. As we establish contact, we go in a different stage and the UAV starts the perching sequence. Lastly, the UAV finalizes the perching stage utilizing a hybrid motion and force controller. The main thing of the perching control strategy is that we focus mostly on two aspects, the rotation motion during perching, but also the tensile interaction. For the rotation motion, we always keep an eye on the angular motion of the UAV. And then for the tensile interaction, it is very important that we uh, model both the, the cable and the environment as a compliant system. Lastly, we switch between force and motion control, depending on the tactile feedback on the cable. We performed uh, several experiments indoors uh, with the use of a quadcopter that has a PX4 flight controller unit on board and also a NUC board. Lastly, we also used a motion capture system inside, uh, namely the Vicon system. And for the tree branch setup, we had a tree branch attached to a rigid structure and we had dampers all around it to uh, replicate different scenarios or different appliances of the tree branch in the outdoors. So on the bottom left video you can see uh, the stiff tree uh, branch experiment where uh, the, tree is, the tree branch is perfectly stiff and the grapple uh, grabs it around and the perching sequence is initialized. On the right side, the tree branch is attached to the rigid structure with a slightly less damped um, um, fixtures and that allows this to replicate a flexible tree behavior. To conclude, we also brought the system outdoors and we saw how it behaved on a real tree. So in this part, we see that the perching sequence is complete and the drone is perfectly idle, so the propellers are switched off. And now for the leaving part, the propeller switch off again, the tether kind of pulls up again the drone a bit, and then the drone detaches from the tree safely and flies away. Thank you very much for your attention. If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.